Hi there and welcome to my channel, A Country Life. I'm Jennifer and I'm gonna do a week of meals for you guys. So tonight, it is, it is Monday. Uh, we are in the coronavirus kind of hashtag safer at home kind of time right now. You guys all know that. And so getting out and about, grocery shopping and things like that can be a little bit difficult. But let me just show you uh, what I was able to put together just using what we had on hand. I will say that we are not at a point where it is dire to get food. We have plenty of things on hand. We did, whoops. <laughs> so we did make some uh, pumpkin bars with cream cheese frosting today. Uh, here is a bag of frozen broccoli. It's now been microwaved. I also made coffee cake. This actually is going to be a video of its own, so be watching for that. Hi there, Joseph. Mmm, <laughs> not cake! You like that? Okay, so really the main... Okay, just a second, guys. Everybody wants to be part of this. Really, the main part of the meal tonight is going to be this French dip. This was in this cookbook right here. I have not ever made it before. It is this 2013 edition of Fix It and Forget It. And basically, it's just some spices, very basic things, with a cup of soy sauce and three cups of water all in here, and you just cook it until it completely falls apart. This was a very small roast, just a chuck roast. It called for a sirloin or something, or no, top round. I did not have that. So this is what we have. It's just a small chuck roast. I tasted it. It does taste very good. I did um, put together a bunch of toasted buns here, a couple hot dog buns. I had some of these larger sourdough buns and one lonely hamburger bun. <laughs> so just trying to use up what we have. Also for supper tonight, if somebody wants to have chili, we have just a little bit of chili left from oh. yesterday. That I made for Sunday night and we had that for Man, lunch oh. today. And I made a big double batch, so there's a little of that left. And then I also made some, just a box oh, of macaroni oh. and cheese. So that is all what we're going to be having for supper on this Monday night. You going to have chili, Mom. Joe? Mom. I got it. Mom. Okay. Do you want more? Yeah. So, Mom, she was this mm -hmm. size. Mom, coffee cake is always but best when it's warm. You like warm coffee cake? Yeah. That's funny because this is my favorite it's when it's cold. So I like cool. it when the glaze kind of like firms up and almost gets a little bit crispy or something. I just really like that. How was the coffee cake, Maria? Delicious. Yes? What's your favorite part? Um, the middle. Like the brown sugar and cinnamon part? I love brown sugar. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone. It's Tuesday night now. Actually just Tuesday late afternoon. It's about 4.10. And uh, what the plan is for supper tonight is gonna be really, really simple again. I ran down to the basement and I had probably about 12 potatoes left. So I have seven potatoes here. I just scrubbed these all up. They were covered, oh, there's another one. <laughs> these were covered in eyes, probably upwards of an inch long. That's okay, I'm gonna make baked potatoes. That's one for each person that'll be home here tonight. And probably not everybody is gonna eat a whole potato. Whatever, you guys, <laughs> you don't care about who's gonna eat a potato or not. But I'm just setting my oven for 350 degrees. I'm not, I'm just gonna cook these real slow, probably well over an hour they're gonna be in there because Warren and Sam won't be coming in from work until about five to 5.20ish, I would think. Um, and so we have plenty of time. And I'm gonna serve these baked potatoes with creamed corn. I have two cans, and so I'll just open those up, warm those up. That was something growing up my mom made all the time. It would be baked potato, you cut it in half, um, put some butter on it, pour the creamed corn over top, and there you go, you have a meal. <laughs> We're not gonna just do creamed corn and potatoes though. I did grab out a loaf of bread, our quick trip. It's kind of funny, the other night I had run into a quick trip when I did a little grocery shop on, let's see, it would've been last week, Thursday night. I ran in in the last half an hour that Walmart was open. Anyway, they're limiting milk to one gallon. We'd have to go to town every single day if we wanted to keep drinking milk. And I'd prefer to just try to get a whole bunch of stuff, bring it all home, and then just stay put for as long as possible. That's been the goal here. And so when I ran into Quick Trip and asked them if they were limiting milk, he kind of looked strange and looked at his coworker and they're like, nope, we're not limiting milk. And he said, um, and so I went and I got my, I, whatever, I think I could carry four gallons. So I got four gallons of milk. And then he said, we're in the last few hours of the 49 cent white bread sale. Do you want, how many of those? Or he just said, how many of those do you want? And so 
I said, you know what, you know me. <laughs> I had $13 in my pocket, so with the four gallons of milk, I was able to get four loaves of bread as well. We are gonna make club sandwiches. So I have been enjoying, as of probably the last, I would say month or so, I've been enjoying Moss Family TV. I don't know if you guys all watch. Um, you know, uh, Fallon and Titus over there, but I do enjoy uh, watching over there. And she had made uh, some club sandwiches the other day, and I thought, that's a great idea. I had the bread, and I had two packages of lunch meat. This was back from my once a month grocery haul, and I had these hiding out in the freezer. And so I just brought them out here today. I've had kids asking, do we have lunch meat? I'm like, mm, I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> I knew I had it. I just wanted to wait as long as possible to um, bring that out. So I'm just going to let this thaw. I have some cool water in here. Oh, the potatoes. The oven is preheated for the potatoes, so I have to get to that. To go with our club sandwiches, I have some lettuce. I started getting this out to wash, but then got sidetracked with potatoes. And I do have a pack of this fully cooked bacon. Mom, you guys hear? <laughs> Dennis the Menace, yep, Dennis the Menace is on right now. A dance off, that sounds like fun. So I do have this thick cut already cooked bacon. I don't have any tomatoes right now. And I do have some cheese, not any kind of cheddar cheese. Yes, I know, it's so funny. Not cheddar cheese, but I'm gonna run out to the fridge in the garage and get some cheese. Okay, so I have some Monterey Jack here. I'm gonna slice this up really, really thin. This is gonna taste um, just fine on the club sandwiches. Actually, I'm gonna like this quite well, I think. <laughs> that piece, I think. Alrighty, so here it is, another evening <laughs> to make supper, and tonight it's going to be so, so easy. Look at this lineup of what I have here. You guys can probably guess I'm going to make some tater tot casserole. Yes, this is such an uh, easy meal to put together, especially if you have already ground beef. The other day I had actually thawed this particular pack of venison which was just a little over two pounds because i was going to make salisbury steak but guess what my meals lasted a long time this week and so uh, i had gotten to a point where i either had to cook this and um and freeze it or i was going to have to we were going to have to eat it that day but we had leftovers and i didn't eat it so i cooked it up really fast with one onion and i just put it in the refrigerator knowing that i could use it within the next day or two so that's what i have i have some ground venison here i have a little bit of veg all left here i'm going to i'm going to drain off the juice here and i'm going to make this super veggie uh tonight i have this another huge can of veg all i'm going to add that one as well and i'm going to do one can of cream of chicken one can of cream of mushroom um tater tot casserole is so like forgiving you can salt and pepper your meat or you don't have to salt and pepper you can season salt it you can garlic onion powder whatever season the top of the potato puffs use two cream of mushrooms two cream of chickens whatever it's just so so easy use whatever veggies you like um, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to put it all in this pan and then I'm going to top it with the tater tots and I have my oven set at 400 degrees. We're going to get it into the oven. This is going to go for 45 or 50 minutes about that basically until Warren comes in from work and then we're going to just sit down and have this. I'm going to put a few sides together and I'll show you those in just a minute. <music>
this is the finished uh, casserole here. We just have our, our hot dish, whatever you guys like to call it, tater tot hot dish. It looks like most of the fruit is already gone. This was pretty full. And that's it. That's all we're going to be having here tonight for supper. Everyone is... Oh my gosh, everybody was snacking on a little bit of caramel See, corn beforehand, so you we'll be good. Okay, here we are the next night. Tonight's supper is a really, really easy one. Uh, this is just two packs, which I think was probably just around five to six pounds of the just chicken wings. And all I do is I just spray the pan and I season this with the Good Seasons Zesty Italian. That's an actual brand. I have found that that works better than just like the Aldi or the McCormick or whatever. So we really, really like the Zesty Italian. It's by Good Seasons brand. It's found right by all of the uh, dressings in the dressing aisle like at Walmart or whatever grocery store. Okay, so I just, I first put them on with the kind of like this side down. Baked them at 425 degrees for, I think it was 30 minutes, and then I and I sprinkled them liberally. Then I turned them over, sprinkled them liberally again with more of the uh, seasoning, and I baked them for another, let's see, I went another like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, about another 30 minutes. And then I turned the oven off, and they've just been in there because everybody is still outside trying to get them in. And... Um, so I just kind of left it in the oven. Basically, you're just looking for it to get nice and crispy. Okay, with that, I have a couple hot sauces. Sam had asked if uh, I could make these more of like a spicy chicken wing, and I really didn't want to do that. So I have a little bit of this one, and then this one is actually really good. It's really high in sugar, though, but this is uh, cranberry chipotle, and that is really, really tasty. What, Peter? Come here. No, I'm filming right now. You're going to have to wait a second. And then we're just going to have plain old macaroni and cheese. This is just the great value from the box. We have some veggies here and cottage cheese, some grapes. And then over here I have some roasted cabbage. So this was kind of funny. I had both the chicken and the cabbage in at the same time, but I didn't have the cabbage in for quite as long as the chicken. And all of a sudden I could hear all this sizzling, and I was like, oh, wow, the chicken is really, really sizzling. And I open up the oven and here is, you know, what's happening is actually this was sizzling and it was starting to kind of burn crispy. So roasting vegetables is really easy. There's no need to be kind of like scared of it or anything. Anywhere from four to 450 degrees. You just kind of have to play around with your oven and then the color pan. Like if you're using a really dark pan or you're using a real light color pan, it really does make a big difference on how uh, it cooks up salt and pepper and olive oil and that's really it anywhere from 20 minutes to 40 minutes again depending on the vegetable so that's going to be supper here tonight okay so here we are supper time again i keep saying that in this video and tonight i'm going to be making some meat pies for supper and so basically this is where you just take some sort of dough and you tuck in some kind of meat mixture and bake it so here what i'm doing is just putting out the Rhodes Rolls. I started with frozen Rhodes Rolls. It makes it so easy to do that. I get those out and set to rise. Uh, shred some mozzarella cheese. Oh, and eat a little bit too. <laughs> Later, I will mix the cheese in with some pizza meat that I had on hand. I had uh, cooked up some hamburger and seasoned it with like some tomato paste and then a bunch of Italian seasonings to give it kind of that a uh, pizza flavor too and I had that in the freezer so I thaw that and I just basically set everything aside until the rolls have risen that took probably three hours so I started this much earlier in the day now here we are getting much closer to the supper hour and I just roll out each individual dough ball into about a four to five, probably closer to a five inch circle. And then put some of my meat filling. You can see that I mixed the cheese in with the meat filling here already. And I'm gonna fold it over. And you really, really wanna pinch the um, edges to seal. So press down pretty hard. And then I used a fork and just went all the way around pressing it pretty much all, just as tight basically as I could get it because I didn't want any of the uh, juices or anything to leak out. And in hindsight, these were very, very tasty. I really like the pizza flavor going on inside of, um, you know, in this like warm and yummy bread dough. 
I did think they needed some more moisture, so I'm not sure if I needed to add a little bit more tomato paste or just more cheese, but as you can see, I had these pretty well um, filled full, and so, you know, you kind of, there's like this, this point where too much filling would be a bad thing too. Um, I whisk up a couple eggs here, actually I think it might have been just one egg, and then Maria takes over. And she brushes them all with the egg wash and oh my goodness does this just this is the trick last time I made these I did not brush them but wait till you see what they look like when they first come out of the oven voila those are so beautiful <laughs> It's probably the prettiest meal that I made this whole week. And then there they are, all hot from the oven. It is supper time once again. It seems like that happens every single day. Do you guys ever get tired of it? <laughs> okay, so what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to make Salisbury steak. Typically, I would make that with mashed potatoes, but we just had mashed potatoes, instant mashed potatoes last night with a beef roast. And so I thought, you know what? I think the kids would probably like to have uh, noodles with this because over the weekend, we also had rice. Um, okay, you don't need to know all of that. But anyway, I'm gonna do this with noodles tonight. So let me just show you the method for putting together the, the little steak patties. It's very, very similar to doing uh, meatloaf, really. Since I'm gonna be using two pounds of ground venison, I'm gonna do two eggs. A half cup of milk. I probably should have measured my breadcrumbs first because now they're going to want to stick in here. But a half cup of breadcrumbs. And then I'm going to season up the meat. So I'm going to do some pepper, some seasoned salt, remembering that you have two pounds, at least that's what I'm using, is two pounds of meat. So it can withstand a lot of seasoning. I usually figure about a teaspoon of salt per pound of meat seems to be seems to work pretty well. I didn't go quite two teaspoons there because I'm going to use some of this. This is like a steakhouse seasoning. I'm going to put a little bit of this in. A couple teaspoons of minced onion as well. There's really no right or wrong ways to do this seasoning, just whatever you think your family's going to like. So here we go, let's get this mixed up. And I'm so proud of myself <laughs> this time. I actually knew I was gonna do this today and so last night I got the meat out and put it in the fridge so it would be thawed. Because this is basically impossible to do with frozen meat or even partially frozen meat. This is ground venison, you can use ground beef. So I'm just going to set these aside until it's time to make supper. It's actually only uh, 4.09 right now, and Warren won't be in until after 5. And these cook up pretty quick, so it's something I like to cook, you know, basically when everybody is here and ready to go, because I'll put these under the broiler uh, in my oven, and they're going to have to go for probably like 5 minutes on one side and 5... Oh, Maybe seven minutes on one side, seven minutes on the other side. It kind of depends if you like them fully done, 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 or if you like them a little bit more like medium. Now, typically, if I had brown gravy packets, I would just use brown gravy packets. But for today, I don't have brown gravy packets. The last two times I've gone grocery shopping, they were completely out of brown gravy packets. I don't really know what that was about. And like beef bouillon, the, the granules. I could get bouillon cubes, but I could not get... So like I could get these, but I could not get the granules. Again, two times in a row they were out of those at the grocery store. Weird. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to make my own gravy here today. I'm going to put together, I'm going to dissolve uh, these in some hot water. And then I'm just going to let that sit at room temperature, kind of cooling off. And then I will stir in some cornstarch later on, and then I'll test it. I might add a little Worcestershire sauce. Uh, I'll tell you more about that. But...
serving up here. This is a Salisbury steak. I had these in for seven minutes on the first side, six minutes on the second side. And then we just made some buttered noodles. I made some gravy and some broccoli. And this is Joe's plate. I wanted to show you one last supper meal. And tonight what we're going to be doing is something really, really easy. So... <laughs> Look at this. We're starting with just some crunchy fish fillets, some hamburger buns, some lettuce. You guys can figure out what I'm going to do here. I'm going to have some sliced cheese and I'm going to kind of like shred up the lettuce a little bit or, you know, just cut it really, really thin and put some mayo on the buns. And that is going to be basically like a Culver's fish sandwich. That's how they do it. They put some mayo on the bun with, um, cheese and lettuce so we're gonna have fish sandwiches for supper tonight and it has taken me a while to really really get into using the air fryer i had gotten this one it was actually sent to me omork i i don't even know like months months ago and i've you actually god it was almost a year ago you guys because i remember making chicken sandwiches before the fair last summer in here um but I'm finally now bringing it, bringing it out. I would say every four or five days I bring this out and I use it. So we've been making um, hash brown patties in here. That's probably my favorite way. It's so fast, or at least it's not necessarily faster than the oven, but it does free up the oven if I want to make the bacon in there. Uh, people have suggested I do bacon in here. I just haven't tried that yet, but Anyway, I'm going to do the fish sandwiches in here. So I did spray some like vegetable spray or Pam, you know, in there so that they don't kind of stick a little bit because sometimes that does happen. I'm going to put these in and this is kind of funny. I do everything. Come on. I do everything at 400 degrees and I do just about everything for 15 minutes and then check it and then do it for uh, whatever amount of time it still needs. Now, I should say not everything at 15 because sometimes if I'm doing like, let's see, what would I do? I would do maybe mozzarella sticks or something. Aldi had those little boxes of mozzarella sticks. Those would go a little less, probably only seven or eight minutes. Anyway, this is not about the air fryer. This is about supper tonight. I'm going to do the fish patties in here because then that frees up my oven so that I can roast sweet potatoes. Now I could do it the other way around. I could roast the sweet potatoes in the air fryer. Never done it. I've seen it done on other YouTube channels. Other moms have done that. Uh, but I just, it's just how I do it is in the oven. I just put a little olive oil here, diced up my sweet potatoes, and then I'm going to throw on some season, no not seasoned salt. Yes, I'm going to put on some seasoned salt and then a little additional garlic and probably a little bit of pepper as well. And I'm probably going to roast those for about 30 minutes and then check on them. So if you are not, uh, if you're new to roasting vegetables in the oven, I like to set mine at 400 degrees. Hi, Maria. Uh-oh, she's going to do some dusting, huh? <laughs> All right. Um, the piano really. You're going to dust the piano? Okay one inch chunks like this. I, I know they're going to have to go at least 30 minutes. I'm going to want to uh, flip them over and then maybe go a little bit longer. We'll really just see. You know, if I have fresher vegetables or a little bit older vegetables, that always plays a part in it too. These are quite fresh. Uh, I'm going to be making some cranberry sauce, so just leave that there, okay? Maybe this weekend I'll get to that. I also just uh, sliced up one uh, pound of strawberries and one bag of grapes. I got those all washed up and they're just sitting over here. I can't believe no one has come over here and snitched these. <laughs> Usually by the time we get to the table, the strawberries are already gone, but that's what we're going to do here for supper on this Friday night. The fish fillets are going in the air fryer behind me. I just took these out. These were in for about 45 minutes. I like them to get nice and dark like this, <laughs> and so this is just right up my alley. Now, we also like to serve these with like ranch dressing that I think is so so good and I realized I completely forgot to put the seasoning on here so I'm gonna have to get some seasoning on these otherwise they're gonna be a little bit bland I don't know what I was thinking I just like put them in the oven and forgot do they have uh you can get butter cheese on the side do they have grapes on the side do they have strawberries on the side do they have paper plates if you're gonna do it like Culver's 
Mom? The Culver's fish sandwiches are actually really good. Mom? Mm -hmm. Joe just squirted ranch in the middle. Anything that there might be a recipe for, I will either type out the recipe in the description box below. Otherwise, I will link to the recipe or another video where I did that. Uh, something like that. So you will be able to find recipes. And then I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you are new to my channel, I really appreciate you subscribing, becoming a part of this YouTube family where we just talk about all things food, family, homeschooling, kids, cranberry marsh, all that kind of good stuff. So you guys have a fantastic day and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.